But winter's here, but that's no excuse to stay out of the garden. In fact, there's just as much to do in the garden during winter as any other season. I'm Justin Harnish, and this is Off My Block. This winter I'm going to put in a greenhouse and this is the site I've chosen because it gets sun pretty much all the time. It's between the, the hen house and the aviary. But it's a bit untidy so I'll have to get in there, get stuck in and tidy it up. Um, level the ground, get some stones in there and hopefully it will be good. This is where I was uh, growing the tomatoes and I'm going to take those out and yeah, lots of stuff to do. Well, as far as my garden is concerned, this greenhouse here is perfect. It will do me well. But I've got to think bigger, because if I want to be self-sufficient, uh, I need to grow and swap and sell. So... I'm putting in a bigger greenhouse. Now, most of the time the things I build are out of recycled materials, but this one I bought... Um, I don't know if it's time or if it's just uh, lack of materials, but it was fairly inexpensive and I've got a nice place for it and I want it up pretty quickly. It's supposed to only take 15 minutes. We'll see. didn't actually take too long before I realised that this wasn't actually the spot I wanted for my greenhouse. So I've moved it over there. And here it is. The good thing about having a greenhouse like this is it's quite transportable. It's light and you can move it to whatever position you want. The only thing is, is once you fill it up, it's probably going to stay there for a while because it's a bit of a pain in the ass taking everything out and moving it. But come on inside. So it is actually pretty warm. I like this. Um, I'm pleased I got it. And right here is a galvanized shelf I put together. It only cost about 20 bucks. So you can see I've already started work here. 
Um, I've also got an older uh, recycled cupboard from the kitchen and that's where I'm going to put all the pots and bits and pieces. As you can see I haven't really got around to uh, sorting it out completely but <clears throat> there's a whole bunch of uh, the peas, broad beans, there's some cuttings from rosemary and down here we're going to have some carnations and dwarf beans. I look forward to growing some stuff in there and seeing how it goes, especially through this winter season. I also put some tarp down there to stop any weeds from coming up and it will do the trick. Right here is the latest bed and as you can see it's going really, really well. You'll also notice in this garden that I've been mulching, uh, that's the lawn clippings from the lawnmower. Awesome way to do it, especially through the winter because it keeps the plants quite warm um, and it adds nutrients to the soil. So you can see that this bed has been really, really good to me. Uh, the garlic over here, uh, early garlic, I'm going to print, uh, plant some more uh, probably in a, about two weeks. Uh, that's getting close to the shortest day of the year. Right here I've got an artichoke. Um, I didn't actually realise I'd planted an artichoke because it was a mix of different vegetables of different uh, seedlings. But this guy here will last about five years when it's, uh, once mature. So I'm going to dig that up and put it into a proper planter or in a, a permanent area. And while I'm digging up plants, there's a banana tree pup I wish to transfer into a pot. I may at some <laughs> stage sell it on or replant it into a better sunny place because right at the moment it's too shady where it is. Don't forget, whenever you take a plant out of the garden, replace it with a new seedling. It's now time to introduce a new section to the show. It's called, with an obvious title, Weed Watch. Check it out. This is Tradescantia fluminensis, the wandering Jew. It's a nasty piece of work, especially in warmer climates. It's shade resistant, in fact it actually prefers the shade. And any tiny piece of this plant will grow roots, so it is very invasive. Best thing you can do is pick it all out, if it's too much you can roll it up and just try and get it by the roots. It's not going to happen, but try and just discard this. Don't put it onto your weed pile, don't put it into your compost. Put it in a bag if you want and throw it out with the rubbish. But then you want to hit it with herbicide um, and hit it hard. You want a fairly decent concentration and then once it's all died back, give it a week or two and then hit it again. Eventually you will get rid of it. But it is incredibly invasive. Make sure that you get every single part of it. When you do spray, it's only the top bit that's actually going to die off. Underneath, the roots and the stem is going to continue. So you got to get to it. Well that's it for this episode, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy it and got a bit out of it. If you did give me a big thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. Next episode we're going to be looking at a shade garden. Until that time, remember, keep calm and garden on.